Hi everybody, this is Vortex Story and welcome to this special episode of 5 Facts You Didn't Know About Driver San Francisco. The game is already over 8 years old and I'm still old some mysteries and fun facts. To tell them, I gathered around me the best of the best of the YouTube driver community, Mini Me, Olenov, Man and Drive, Martin Big from Will Spin Gaming and myself. Please enjoy the video and let's start with fact number 1. What? Did you know that Driver San Francisco had a mobile port? And I'm not talking about an iOS game or an Android game, I'm in fact talking about a Java phone game, like, like an old flip phone game from 2011 which was really late in the Java phone's life cycle and was very late for these sort of games to release, but it wasn't so uncommon that it didn't happen. It's still surprising that they made this though, especially with the iOS port of the first game releasing just two years earlier in 2009. That port was developed by Gameloft who were and still are known for impressive mobile game tech, and this game is developed by them too, so unsurprisingly it's quite impressive for a Java phone game. I expected to play like a completely standard cash-in driving game with linear missions, but they actually made an attempt at an open world driving game here, complete with side missions, money to buy new cars, and even a vague text retelling of the main game's story. Which means Tanner is still unconscious here and can shift in this game, but instead of floating around as an ominous eye and picking the car you want, you instead just open up a car menu and switch between cars that you've bought. It's expectedly pretty watered down, as is the open world, which is broken up into a handful of different districts that you unlock as the story goes along. Unfortunately, actually playing this game isn't particularly fun. Uh, the missions are actually pretty varied, with races, tailing missions, dodging cars missions, takedown missions, like, it, it, it's all good stuff on paper, but Java phones struggle with two inputs at once, and, and this is like a real problem for racing games. Like, you can't even accelerate and turn at the same time. The solution that they've come up with is that you're always accelerating. Uh, you can hit 8 to brake, 5 or 2 to boost, 6 or 4 to turn, and they've separated the handbrake turns onto their own buttons, with 1 to handbrake turn left and 3 to handbrake turn right. Oh, and 0 pulls a 180 if it wasn't all clunky enough. Uh, you do actually get somewhat used to it, but the physics system seems too broken and nonsensical. Like, a car can crash into you and it'll feel like the game is completely unresponsive for like seconds on end, or, or when the road turns, the game just tries to like turn for you a bit, but it, it, it often just results in you ramming into a wall against your will. Like, it, it really, it all doesn't feel great, and the incredibly short draw distance doesn't help in the slightest. But for a $3 Java phone game, I'm impressed that at least some effort went into this. Like, it's a better production than I expected it to be, and while that doesn't make it worth playing in the slightest, it does make it a fascinating spin-off for the series. What? Hey everyone, I'm Olano from YouTube, longtime driver fan and modder. Today, I'm going to be telling you about a piece of cut story content. So strap in and hold on, we're going for a ride. This discovery came upon in the Xbox 360 version of Driver San Francisco, going through the FMV, full motion video files, which turned out to be a PIP, a picture in picture video like the ones you'd see regularly in game at the top of the screen. Any word on Ardell? Oh damn man, we should get you a little bell or something. In the video, Tanner is having a conversation with someone named Sarah, who seemed to have been his wife at some point. Playing the hero again, Tanner. What, Sarah? Do I have a choice? You saved me in a dream. But you couldn't save our marriage. I'm sorry, baby. I didn't know what I'd lost until it was gone. After posting it on Twitter, one Ian Mayer, a writer working for Ubisoft, who was a game and a narrative designer on Driver San Francisco, confirmed this. Special thanks to Chuck Covella for tagging him bringing this to his attention. Mayer had this to say about it. We did have a subplot involving Tanner's ex-wife being the target of Jericho's gang, with another character henchman that was going to be a repeated threat. We cut it because it took a lot of explaining and distracted from the main plot. So not only do we know that they intended for Tanner to have been married at one point, but it was supposed to show up as part of many side stories in Drivers and Fran. Although perhaps the most interesting finding along the 360 files, it wasn't the only one. Others included placeholder videos, some of which have been known for a while on the PC, but also other story and side missions. This is 40M30 in pursuit of Jericho gang member northbound on King Street towards Bay Bridge. Tanner, do we need backup? 
Seems at one point, Garber San Francisco had a lot more planned for it than what we got. No kid. Fun fact, if you got the PC version and VLC media player, you can navigate to your game folder to look at some of these right now. The 360 version has quite a bit more though. Do you know what's funny? Yeah, delete this pip! Shut up! Hello, I'm Ian from Mine and Drive. This is about the uh, the garage that appears in the Blast from the Past challenge. Now, as you may all know, if you reach 88 miles per hour in the DeLorean, you will unlock the Blast from the Past challenge. And it takes you to a garage that uh, appears, well, practically in the middle of nowhere. Now, of course, this mission is a throwback to Driver 1's first mission. And uh, the location I managed to somehow find out due to the film director. Everyone used to wonder where it was, this location. And I thought, let's have a look around film director to see if I can see outside in the distance. Because um, you can see it's like a bright white weather. Um, and you can see in the distance there, the tower and the Golden Gate Bridge. So I thought, huh, that's maybe where it's located then. So you may be asking, how do I get to this place, Mr. Man? And I will tell you that you have to do it online. Or you can also do it on split screen. Now, unfortunately, in single player, it does respawn you before you get there. So all you have to do is get yourself a low car and find the space in the bridge you just saw there. You will fall down under the bridge. And then you just got to follow this route. When you go under the Golden Gate, keep close to the road, but not too close, and continue the route. Now, if you've done what I've said, you've nearly completed your journey, and the garage should pop into sight at some point. You could be above the garage or below the garage, the, the actual invisibleness you're driving on is a bit weird sometimes. You can just sort of drive straight into it. And you can just have some fun by driving around there in whatever car you may have. And because there is no bright white weather, you can actually see the Golden Gate in the distance. Now just be warned, sometimes when online it does respawn you back in the city or do this. Thank you very much Vortex for having me, I'm Ian from Mine and Drive and Merry Christmas. Driver San Francisco was originally going to be a very different game. In 2010, Zumu Digital, the developer behind Sega Rally Revo, the Sonic and All-Stars series and Driver 76 on PSP, began pre-production of a new Driver game under the working name of Driver 5. The game was originally going to be published by Ubisoft and released on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and Nintendo Wii in early 2011. The game would have taken the series in a new direction, with a focus on destructible environments. Concept art shows cars smashing through buildings and racing past crumbling scenery and explosions. Michael Bay would have been proud. Along with San Francisco, other planned locations included New York and Las Vegas, which also featured in the first two driver games. Ultimately, the game never went past pre-production and the project was handed over to Ubisoft Reflections instead, which went on to develop Driver San Francisco. Driver San Francisco is a game very unique thanks to the shift, but did you know that this feature was almost called Zap? The name wasn't chosen until very late in the development of the game. Before that, you had the developers using both Zap and Shift to talk about the same thing as an old post from Ubisoft Reflection on Facebook reveals. Even though Shift was in the end picked, you had developers attached to the Zap name that would still use it. Indeed, you can find in the game itself signs of this cleavage. Sometimes when Tanner shifts in a new car, he will exclaim saying Zap. Even Jones uses that word. Whoa! The there is no part of me that wants to believe what I just saw. In the cut scene where Tanner convinces him of his ability to shift into people, Jones will refer to this by saying, when you zap into. So, let me get this straight. Would you zap into a fine looking lady? I keep my hands on the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Alright. <laughs> Let's get back to work. Thank you, oh God, please, run at me. Oh. Oh. oh my goodness. I think we got it.
And that's the end of this video. Thanks again to Minimi, Olonov, Man and Drive, and Martin Big to work with me on that facts hunt. If you like it, we have more facts to tell you about. And to celebrate a thousand subscribers to my channel, I'm running a contest on Twitter and Facebook with the chance for you to win a free copy of Driver San Francisco on Uplay. Follow the pages, like and share the post to enter in the contest. Enjoy all the driver content currently showing on YouTube and see you soon.